Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Dane, host, and I hope you're doing well wherever you may find yourselves. A while back I did a video entitled, Bands I Just Effing Hate. Well, today is the opposite, and I'm presenting to you finally, as I posted in the community section a couple weeks ago, this video is about bands I effing love, and on top of that, I'm downright obsessed with. So bands I effing love, and I'm effing obsessed with. So... Let's go ahead and get started. There are 40 of them, bands and artists. No particular order, no ranking whatsoever, just presenting to you my love of these bands and my thoughts about them. Let's start with an artist. And if you've watched this channel, you know that this is my favorite artist of all time, David Bowie. What a discography. You have an, a wonderful album run, perhaps the best album run of all time, starting with Space Oddity all the way through and including, say, Let's Dance, and there's a drop-off with three or four albums, and then the back half of his catalog, Rare Indeed, where you get another wonderful album run, um, closing with um, his last album, Black Star. Now, I fell in love with Bowie, not right away, I'd always heard his stuff on the radio at a young age, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old, what have you. And I didn't begin to appreciate him till around the time that I heard Scary Monsters. And so I'm 16-ish. It's not that I didn't like him. I liked Bowie always, but this is when I began to fall in love with his music and his genius, if you will. <coughs> Whether you talk about his blue-eyed soul, his, what do you call it, his glam rock era, which is probably my favorite, or his more in his later career. I'm not sure what to label that. Labels can be bad, but his his more poetic. We talk about um, the reality album, the heathen album, the hours. That's a more po He's always poetic. He's always been poetic. That's not what I'm saying, but um, it, it's it's above and beyond poetic stylings. Just it was there was something fresh. The direction that he went into mature kind of thing, and I don't like the word either, but just an amazing comeback uh, David Bowie had in the um, last third or half of his discography, for the most part. Sticking with artist, Miles Davis. If you haven't seen it and you're interested, please check out um, where I ranked my favorite Miles Davis albums, most of them in the electric period, but two or three or four of them from before uh, that period. And again, the maestro himself, another genius, um, the epitome of jazz, rock, jazz, fusion, jazz by itself, right? Um, inspira inspiring to so many of us, regardless of what genre we gravitate towards, towards the most. Um, when I teach, um, when Black History Month rolls around in my U.S. history class, I, one of the first Bessie Smith is in a textbook, and um, Cab Calloway, and I focus on those as well, but I have to include Miles Davis there. When we do the music section, we do the sports and historic things as well. It's all history, right? Just different subcategories, but I have to talk about how, in my opinion, Miles Davis um, is, is just a genius, and his, his love of the craft, if you will, and um, last year I showed my class um, some highlights of the Isle of Wight Festival, and, and Keith Jarrett was narrating some of that. You can find that on YouTube. And boy, did my students pay attention. Anita Simone comes to mind. I talk about her during Black History Month as well. So anyway, i got to give props to where, where credit where credit is due. Miles Davis, for so many of us, the king of the mountain when it comes to jazz. All right, next, sticking with artist is Ian Hunter. I love Ian Hunter in Moth the Hoople. Also love his solo career. There's a lot to like there. Um, I did a video on that as well, shameless plug, <laughs> um, about ranking all of his studio albums, his solo studio albums. And um, it took me a while to get get, get all of his stuff on um, physical, on, on CD in, in physical form. But I achieved it, and I'm glad I have it. I can play in the car and that thing. But Ian Hunter is one of those down-to-earth folks, great lyricists, um, glam with Mott the Hoople in, in a few, on a few albums, and then he gets into more of a Bob Dylan-esque type uh, 
period in his solo career, and I've, I've, I've quite warmed up to that stuff, as I mentioned before. Um, I have a t-shirt to, to show off my, I don't like to show off, but to show off my love um, to this wonderful genius of an artist, so Ian Hunter. Um, let's move on to something totally different, as they say on Monty Python, the groove metal band Down. That debut album, NOLA, is, I think, a masterpiece when it comes to heavy metal or groove metal, the subcategory, right? Phil Anselmo is in true rare form. He exceeded my expectations on that debut. The second album is as falling off. The third album is decent, but the two purple EPs, phenomenal. You can listen to both of them back-to-back as a full-blown album. Um, and part of this video today is whether these, I should have mentioned this at first, but um, whether these bands are still around or not is inconsequential. These are bands that I love. If they're still around, I may not like the back third or back half of their catalog or back quarter or fourth of the catalog, but I still am love, I still love them overall, despite some falling off in their sound, age, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm still obsessed with them as well. Um, I, and essentially what this boils down to today's video is I can't get enough of these bands whether they're done with and they're retired or they moved on to a different band or they just plain suck I still want more and so that's why I'm you know always gravitating towards this band I, I just can't get enough um, the way I can't get enough of my cat very similar um, to that so down what an amazing band um, I like down more than Pantera I know it's blasphemy um, but and just by a smidge but Okay, next is Ronnie James Dio. So this is kind of a twofer. I'm including Dio's solo career and his stint in Rainbow. So let's talk about Rainbow first. Those first three albums. I'm I'm in love with Rising and the first album. In an, in an interview, you can see it on YouTube with the the the, uh, the cinematography or, or the, the 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 video quality is very poor. But Dio sitting on a bus and he's being interviewed. And it's in installments, I think one or two of them, maybe three. And he still has a full head head of hair at this point. He's on the bus, as I said, and he's pulling out the um, and he's talking about them one by one. The uh, not the jewel cases, but the digi packs of the Rainbow discography that he's in. And he talks about how there's too much hype for Rising, which is many of us's favorite. It's mine. And he talks about the first album. This is where it was at. So I love that first album. Um, there's a, a song or two that's mediocre, but overall it's great. It's a great album. So his stint in Rainbow on the third album, there's a falling off, but there's some, there's four or five really amazing songs there. And there's songs like Rainbow Eyes and The Shed that aren't up to snuff for me, but it's still amazing in spurts and, and places and it's worth having. And I have it in my collection back here. Um, if you talk about a solo career, he, let's face it, he peaked too early with Holy Diver. What a great album for start to finish. It's a beautiful, it's a masterpiece, it's a genius. Writing, guitar playing, Vivian Campbell is one of the true reasons that is a great album. There are other reasons, of course, the production, the engineering, Dio himself, of course. Um, Last in Line is a good sophomore effort, but it, it, it does a bit falling off from that debut. And then, for me, Dio doesn't bounce back until you get into... Uh, Lock up the wolves, which I love and which I love and which I love more and more each week it seems, and Strange Highways, which is just I think phenomenal. Sounds like a Sabbath record, and I've talked about why. Um, and then Killing the Dragon, I love. I'm not a big fan of Magica, and uh, the last one with Mystery on the Moon or something like that. Just I can never remember the name of that title. Um, but there's something just downright amazing as we all said about his vocal presence, his his presence on stage, if you've seen video, I've never seen him live, but just a wonder, a uh, genius intellect kind of thing when it comes to music and songwriting and that kind of thing. And, and he could be downright philosophical at times. Um, so Dio and Rainbow, those first three albums. Um, I have to include this so it'll be 41 bands, not 40. The punk band The Damned. And if we talk about my favorite run would be the first album, Damn, 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 through and including anything. 
And there's there's some interesting stuff after that, like um, Grave Disorder is one of the albums I like in the back catalog. I don't care for the new album that they put out. The one before that's not bad. Um, but to me, this is what punk should be. Now, having said that, they do veer off into other waters. There's some new wavy keyboardy stuff on anything. There's some prog rock stuff with songs like Curtain Call Parts 1 and 2, but it still has that punk aesthetic to it in, in certain ways, which is hard to describe. I saw them live a uh, Halloween night here in New Orleans years and years ago, um, and I'm so glad. I, I had no idea they were coming. A, a, f- a friend of mine rang me up just before the age of cell phones, and I was like, yeah, I definitely want to go to that. And David Vanian came out in his Victorian coat, the um, the um, Dr. Jekyll coat, you know, that has the, the flap at the top. It was gray. It was beautiful. You know, that vampire look kind of, or Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde look, or uh, Barnabas Collins from the TV show, uh, uh, Dark Shadows, that kind of the vampire thing. So what a great band. Uh, those first three albums were my favorite. Damn, 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 Machine Gun Etiquette, and um, now I've lost I've lost the name of the record in my in my head in my head, but I also love Phantasmagoria. Strawberries is different, but I, I love that as well. Anything I think is a solid record. So got to give my love to to, Dan, to the Damned. I'm obsessed with them. Now this next band, I'm hoping for a return to form, but I'm talking about the doom metal band Monolord. That first album, that debut, Empress Rising, the title track, is just stellar. The whole album is great. Uh, I can never pronounce it, but it's the the cow in Norse mythology that, that is at the beginning, the genesis of the gods and all that. Adumbla, something like that. That's a great song. The whole album is wonderful. Um, and then you have Veneer, which is even better than the debut. Their best album, if you ask me. And then you have two albums after that. You have some EPs here and there, which are all solid. Their last EP, however, is exception to that rule. It's it's decent. The vocals are a little different, so it's not as do- it's it's not doomy anymore. It's more progressive than anything. I still like it. The album, the full blown album before that, the title is eluding me. That has the flowers and the bunny on the cover is good. The last song is the the last two songs are the best. You have the album Rust, which just is amazing, um, and No Comfort is really stellar as well. So I want more from these. I hope they're going to be around for a long time. Sticking with doom metal, Electric Wizard. They no longer exist as a band, but I, let me take a sip of my iced coffee here. I think that as far as doom doom bands go, this is in the top five of all time. What a discography, uh, what a great album run. There are no stinker albums in her catalog, and of course that's rare. Um, I really love Wizard Bloody Wizard as short as it is. I th- I that's that may be moving up. I got to do a video. I'm I'm planning to do a video on ranking their albums. That may be may be moving up. That's why I haven't done it yet as I said on my community page uh, a while back. But Electric Wizard is just so heavy. I think they're pioneers of the doom metal genre. They made it fresh, they made it new in so many ways. So Electric Wizard, uh, Dope Throne is their masterpiece. It's all good, um, which, of course, to quote Sheldon Cooper, is statistically unlikely, but for them, it's all good. Next is the band Swans. High praise deservedly goes their way, I think. Excuse me. Michael Gira, or Hira, is, I think, a genius. Uh, That last album... Totally blew me away. They, my favorite song, Go Figure. I love a good epic ride. It's the 44-minute track, which the, the name of the track eludes me. But I also love The Great Annihilator. That's my favorite. I love the live album, um, The Swans Are Dead. Of course, they had broken up or were going to break up. Then they get back together, which is great. Hence the name of that album. They thought they were done. Um, it's it's the, Their earlier stuff is really heavy. And there's, there's you know, the, the, the stories of how Early on, when they were so heavy, they had that God flesh sound that the decibels were so loud that people were literally getting dizzy, throwing up, and feeling nauseous, or all the above. Um, that's not why you like a band, but you get my point. And then he moved away from that because Michael Hero said, "Well, we can only do this so much. We need to we need to broaden our horizons." Of course, I'm paraphrasing. Um, what a great discography, with the exception of maybe like Bowie. I love everything in their run except for maybe three or four albums. But still, what a great discography. Um, 
There, there, no one else. No one sounds like this. No one sounds like swans, and I'm glad. Um, um, people will say they're not for everybody. Um, okay, but having said that, um, I don't want to say that. Give them, give them a shot. Uh, because if you say they're not for everybody, it sounds kind of snobbish. It may not be, but it kind it kind of sounds kind of snobbish. All right, next is Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats are now just Uncle Acid. Um, their last album I thought was disappointing. I did not do a review on it. I like it, but it's it it it's not what I was hoping for. Um, they decided to create a pseudo soundtrack based on uh, their love of the Jalla film, the Italian horror film, which I love. Suspiria is not. I'm sorry, Suspiria is not a Jalla film, but but uh, Dario Agenta did um, those types of movies, um, and while I appreciate the effort, and I like I said, I do like it. There's some really good gems on that album, from start to finish. It is not a, it's not great from start to finish, is what I'm saying, but I appreciate the effort. Maybe um, I've only listened to it four or five times, um, and each time I came back the same way, feeling, well, this is a really good song. This is a really good song, but um, there's more left to be desired. Um, hey, you got to experiment, right? You don't want to play to the gallery, as Bowie said. So I get that, and I appreciate that. And while it's not my favorite album and it's disappointing, I love them for it, for for for, for taking that risk. You know, Mustaine, Metallica, that kind of thing. Um, so Swans and Uncle Acid are the last two that I mentioned. Um, totally two different bands, but the common denominator, again, of all these, if you're just joining in, is... I'm obsessed with these bands. Uh, next is Nine Inch Nails. When I first heard the debut album, I was, I was, I don't want to say I was blown away, but I was beside myself, perhaps in a good way, thinking, this is interesting. You're combining hard rock, heavier music with dance electronica. And I wasn't all in at first. I did like what I was hearing, um, but it's not until the, 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 the sophomore, when I heard March of the Pigs, and Closer to the God. The Downward Spiral is their magnum opus, Trent Reznor's masterpiece, and they have a wonderful discography, with the exception of Year Zero, which I do like, not as up to snuff with the rest of the discography. Those last three EPs, or last two EPs and album, wow, just amazing. So the, the, the two EPs broken and fixed, and just the stuff he did with Atticus Ross, for the soundtrack for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I love, it's a double or triple album. I love that stuff too. The um, the Ghosts trilogy, one through four, then five and six. Wow, just great, great, great stuff. And the Ghost stuff is is special to me and I'm biased because you have Adrian Ballou playing with Trent. Just, just amazing. Now this next band you may not be familiar with, um, and if I'm pronouncing it right, Causa Sui. And that's a Latin term that means something, and I always forget. This is a band from Sweden or De- Denmark, I think Denmark, and they're they're a pastiche or a combination of psychedelia, doom, hard rock, jazz, and maybe well, I, I'm not sure what it, what else, but those are the the big four or five, and you would think combining those don't work, and they have just a huge catalog. Now, the stuff that are the, um, I gotta look it up for you if you have a minute, because the, the, the term that I'm looking for is not popping to my head, and I want to share this with you, especially if you're not familiar with this band. So, sorry for the delay. Cause us we means self-caused think fiat god created god oh, no that's not right I'm, something like that um sorry brain bubble here all right let's take so they have one two three four five six seven studio albums they have two live albums um one's a triple i believe the one that i like the most that i i don't own any of this music i just have it uh, where I play it on my phone through my soundbar because try, trying to track them down is, is proving to be quite difficult. So at some point, maybe I'll get these. The Session albums, that's what... A, the Summer Sessions, Volume 1, 2, and 3. The Pewter Sessions, 1, 2, and 3. Those are six. Those are the, the more jazzy 
um, Miles Davis electric funk kind of stuff, not funk, but electric period, heavier stuff combined with jazz that if you're interested, I highly suggest. So Causa Sui, C-A-U-S-A space S-U-I. I am obsessed with this band. So I'm always listening to them despite the fact that I don't own anything by them. Um, they are so wonderful. Like Swans, you can't put them really. Swans call themselves a no-wave band, but you really can't label them. There's just something, even though they have this subgenre and this subgenre in their music and, and combination, you really can't put them into their own category. It doesn't do it justice. I love this band. I'm obsessed with them. Next is Mahavishnu Orchestra with Slash John McLaughlin, whatever, whatever he's in, right? Um, what a wonderful band, Jazz Fusion, Birds of Fire, some amazing guitar playing, of course, from John, but if you talk about the band in general, those first four albums, those first five albums, the live material, which is pulled from those first four albums or so. Birds of Fire is my favorite. The, the second favorite would be the, the debut. Um, but all around, this is a band that just like Swans, like Causal Sui, has its own, you, even though it's jazz fusion and you know there's some similarities between other jazz fusion bands, uh, I really think Mahavishnu Orchestra is stands above is head and shoulders above the rest. They they set they they have similar vibes and sounds, but yet they don't. If that makes sense, and they're the king of the mountain, and I always look forward to when the light bulb goes over the head that hey, it's time to listen to them. I get excited. I, I, I literally I get goosebumps. So Mahavishnu Orchestra is also a band I'm obsessed with. Next band I'm obsessed with and just f in love is the band Triumph. Hi, sweetheart. My cat is such a ham. He poses in some of the the cutest ways. Anyway, so where was I? Triumph. Whether you're talking about the debut, Rock and Roll Machine, or in the beginning, there's, a, you know, one's really the true debut, that kind of thing. Rick Emmett is just an all-around talent. He is... He is the heart and soul of that band. He's the, the backbone of that band. He's many organs, right? Um, you know, I love the bass player. I love the drummer. But to me, this was always... What made this band... What made me become obsessed with this band is the vocals, the vocal talent, and the amazing guitar playing from Rick. He doesn't get enough love regarding both of those skills. Um, now, th the last album where he's not on is, is, to me, not a Triumph album. It's okay. And there's there's a couple of sleeper albums like uh, Sport of Kings and um, half of another album. I'm trying to think of which one it is, but it's not coming to me. Progressions of Power. I like maybe half of that or two-thirds of it. But overall, sonic goodness in every lesson. <laughs> so Triumph. Uh, Got to give them. I can't get enough of Triumph. I'm always wanting at some point to listen to them. Next is Humble Pie. What a great album run they have from As Safe As Yesterday Is through and including, say, Smokin' or rather Eat It. Um, Steve Marriott's voice, very much like Terry Reed's. They, they sound almost exactly the same twins vocally in a way. When, when, and it's because of Steve Marriott's voice and his guitar chops and, and, and com combination with Peter Frampton, the twin guitar going on, right? Early twin guitar in many ways. Not in Iron Maiden or Judas Priest sense, but you get my point. Um, training off flicks and that kind of thing. Just a wonderful band. The chemistry in that or original lineup, Jerry Shirley on drums, right? What a great band. Um, and... Again, it's too bad that um, Steve died in a house fire because Peter Frampton, as I said before, was was wanting or itching to get back together with his old bandmate and what could have been, right? All right, next is Yes. When it comes to Yes's catalog, the only albums I like are starting with the second album, Time and Word, through and including, it really begins though with the Yes album, through and including 
going for the one, although that pales in comparison to what comes before. Really, they're, in my opinion, their last really good album, which is to me is my favorite, and their magnum opus is Relayer. And Fragile is, Fragile is wonderful, so is Close to the Edge. These are all wonderful albums. That's a trilogy right there. Tales for topog- Topographic Oceans is something that is in a, is, I lost my train of thought. Uh, Tales of Topographic Oceans is an album that I have to be in the mood to listen to. Um, what I was trying to say is that some people will call it an acquired taste, and I hate that phrase, and I've talked about that before, um, which I won't go down that road, so excuse me, but um, it's it's not very accessible compared to Close to the Edge, Relayer, and Fragile. I'll have to say, though, that once you get into 90120, I was pretty much out for a while. And then there's there's a song here and there's a song here on a song here, a song there on some of their later stuff, like Magnification, etc. Uh, Anderson, Bruf, Bruford, Wakeman, Ho, that kind of how, that kind of thing. Um, but Big Generator and 90120 don't do much for me, if anything at all. And Going for the One, I thought was disappointing. It's decent, it's solid, it's not great. But, and Tormato... Tormato has its moments. I only like one song on uh, drama, which is Machine Messiah. Live material is amazing. Um, but despite the fact that there's only five, six, or seven Yes albums that I truly love, I'm still obsessed with them as a band. All right, next is Celtic Frost. Well, hold that thought. Hellhammer slash Celtic Frost slash Triptychon, focusing mostly on Celtic Frost, one of the pioneers in death slash doom metal, although they have qualities of both but don't fit in both, if that makes sense. There's something unique about Thomas Gabriel Warrior's um, method to his madness, if you will. Now you have the snoozer in Cold Lake where they have Cherry Orchid, which is they went the glam metal route, and I appreciate the effort, uh, but it's not the Celtic Frost I know and love. Uh, the album after that, the, the name's eluding me, is, is is solid, but it's not great. It's the heavy stuff that's where it's at, right? Emperor's Return, uh, Morbid Tales, um, Into the Pandemonium, to Megatheron, right? And then the two Triptychon albums are fabulous as well. Uh, oh, and Monotheist, the comeback album before they broke up again, Celtic Frost did. All right, next is Megadeth. Megadeth... was originally for me a band that I fell in love with at when when Peace Sells But Who's Buying comes out. And then I went back and listened to the debut and I thought, boy, I'm really liking this. some really good heavy stuff. It, now, I think the debut is heavier than Peace Sells. Uh, the debut is more pure thrash than Peace Sells. Then you get into So Far, So Good, So What?, I really like that album, especially Side 2, but the, the cover song of Anarchy in the UK doesn't do much for me. But Hook and Mouth, um, Liar, it's just Side 2 is just what makes that album. And then the magnum opus, if I thought I was in love with Megadeth when those first three albums came out, when I heard Rust in Peace, it took me to a whole new level. Great from start to finish. This is a pure thrash album. This is an, a wonder. Then you get Countdown to Extinction. You get um, Cryptic Writings. You get the Marty Friedman era, right? And then we get into Revolving Door of people coming in and out of the band. Um, and it's really the first half of that catalog or first two-thirds that makes the band, but I'm still obsessed with them. I do look, I do like some of the later stuff, especially the last two albums. That, well, the last album, especially... Uh, dystopia is okay. What I meant to say was Endgame is really good, and that's somewhere in the middle, right? Um, there's some okay stuff on Risk. So, Megadeth. Next is Pink Floyd. The first two albums with Sid Barrett, miles apart. Well, I should say David Gilmore is on the second album, but those first two albums are miles apart from their peak, which would be Dark Side of the Moon, right? Animals, Wish You Were Here, and The Wall. But having said that, I do like Adam Hot Mother. I do love Metal. Metal is a wonderful album. It's majestic. It's grandiose. It's psychedelic goodness with some heaviness. You know, One of These Days, Pillow of Winds, Echoes, just one of the 
greatest epic tracks prog rock of all time. It's so enticing. You got to plant yourself, right? I love Adam Hart Mother. Um, some people have described described it as bloated. I, I don't see that, but again, just my opinion. Even the soundtracks are noteworthy, especially the songs from Zab- Zabriskie Point and more is quite good in times. Probably the worst one would be Obscured by Clouds, but there's some good stuff there as well. So Pink Floyd. Next is Genesis, especially when it comes to the original lineup with Peter Gabriel. There's nothing like it. Now, having said that, when he leaves and you have Phil Collins take over, well, first of all, their magnum opus is Selling England by the Pound, great from start to finish, goosebumps and all that. But boy, did Phil Collins fill in some big shoes and succeed totally with Trick of the Tail. And then there's some falling off with, then there were three, Duke, I'm not a big fan I'm not a big fan of whatsoever. Um, I do like much of Wind and Wuthering, although Watt Gorilla uh, leaves much to be desired. And I do like part of part of Abaca- Abacab. And someone said that Abacab is Genesis's answer to um, Rush's moving pictures. Okay. Next is Queen. First two albums are great. Quasi, pseudo, not pseudo, quasi or demi- Prog Rock, right? Sheer Heart Attack, their magnum opus. Great from start to finish. I love the way all the songs blend in together. There's only one song I don't like. Uh, the Leroy Brown song. Um, a Day at the Races and A Night at the Opera or Companion Albums. I've talked about that before in a previous video. And then you get the wonderful News of the World. And then some later stuff I do like. But the, the ones that I mentioned, that's their, that's their best work. And I'm always going back to it. Next is Grand Funk Railroad. The debut album, the live album, Closer to Home, E Pluribus Funk, Parts of Survivor, their magnum opus, We're an American Band. Wow. And I'm obsessed with them, even though I don't like half of their discography, give or take. Um, they're just so inspiring to listen to. And much of what they say lyrically... Um, while some have said it sounds dated, especially some have argued e pluris, uh, the E Pluribus album, um, Funk, um, if I'm getting the title right, parts of Shine On are great, um, songs about the war, and it's Vietnam, we get that, but you can apply that to modern times. It, it may sound a little dated, but I still like it. So Grand Funk Railroad, what a great bass player, what a great guitar singer, and then the drummer sings as well. Uh, on we're an American band here and there so and other times what a great band and I wish they would had not sold out and gone and done the locomotion and and things like that and some kind of wonderful that kind of thing anyway next is Queensryche talk about that wonderful first EP through it including Promised Land what a great band Jeff Tate's vocal register um, a marvel Um, it's too bad that the band had to fall apart because of the infighting uh, the nepotism between that Je- Jeff Tate had his wife as the person who was handling the uh, merchandise or something like that, and he spat on one of his bandmates. It's it's too bad it came to that. But what a great first run, that the, the first half of that discography, or first third, right? Great band. There's no one like them, if you ask me. Yes, that first song, Queen of the Reich, has an Iron Maiden feelish to it, but then they find their true signature sound, even on that EP. It doesn't all sound like Iron Maiden. Parts of it does, but anyway. And then their magnum opus, Operation Mind Crime. Um, I remember getting it, and the sticker on it, this was when I got it on vinyl, right when it came out, it said that the critic who you know had the sticker made and put on the album says, it's as good as the wall. Yes, it's that good, and it is. Um, Heart. Next is Heart. I only like the first five albums and a song here and a song there. The 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 album Bad Animals and the comeback album just called Heart has some good stuff on it, but it's really those first five albums. Dreamboat Annie is their magnum opus, great from start to finish. Little Queen is wonderful. Magazine has its moments. And what am I missing? That's three. Babel the Strange is four, and of course the wonderful dog and butterfly. Well, folks, this is 
where I'm going to stop, I'm going to make this a part one and there will be a part two. So these are bands I effing love and are obsessed with. Thank you so much for watching. Take care now.